Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about security. Uh in this lesson, we're going to look at all the things that people do to make themselves feel safe. All of the things that we do because even though it would be nice to think we live in a really safe world, sometimes the world isn't safe. Depending on where you live, uh it depends a lot on uh a lot of factors um and sometimes as humans, we think of ways to protect ourselves. So, this lesson will be about all the things we do to prevent theft, the things we do to prevent crime, the things that we do to prevent getting mugged when we're walking down a city street. So, this lesson will be all about security, all about the things we do in order to stay safe as we go through our daily lives. Security system or alarm system. One of the things that people might do in their home but they most often do in a place of business is they install a security system or an alarm system. A security system has a variety of components. We'll talk about all of them. You'll see in this picture here, a security system has a keypad and cameras and motion detectors and all kinds of different sensors. A security system or alarm system is something that you install in a house or install in a business so that when you aren't there, there the building can monitor if people are trying to break in or if people are trying to do something bad. So, often you will have a security system installed to protect a place of business or to protect your home. It might have surveillance cameras or security cameras. A surveillance camera or security camera doesn't always look this big. They're starting to get smaller and smaller and harder to spot but if you look on the outside of a building and if you see something like this, we would call it a surveillance camera and I think the more common term would be to say it's a security camera. Oftentimes, if a business doesn't have an alarm system and if they get robbed, they will install an alarm system and they will install security cameras so that there's Something that can record what happens when they're not there at night or when they're closed. A security camera records footage. That's how we refer to the video that's created by a security camera. If a business is robbed, the police might say, can we see your footage? Can we see the security footage from your security camera? We'd like to review the footage to see if we can see who stole whatever was stolen. So, footage is what we call the file created from a video camera or from a a security camera. Alarm systems also have motion detectors. Now, many houses in Canada will have a light outside attached to a motion detector. So, if you walk up to someone's house at night, the motion detector will sense your motion. The motion detector can sense motion and it will turn on a light. Uh, A motion detector can also be connected to an alarm system Um, but I think the most common motion detector in Canada on a house is usually attached to an outdoor light so that if motion is detected, the light comes on because a lot of crime happens at night. When it's dark, it's easier to commit a crime, I think. I wouldn't know why because I've never committed a crime but certainly a motion detector attached to a light is a good idea. An alarm system also has a keypad and we'll talk a little bit about keypads. Maybe you work somewhere where if you're the first person at work, you need to turn off the alarm. Maybe if you're the last person at work, you need to set the alarm and you do that usually using a keypad. Along with the keypad, you will be given a code. So, if you work in a building that has an alarm system, you will have a code like one, two, three, four. Hopefully, that's not your code. You will have a code that you punch in whenever you set the alarm or when you turn off the alarm. So, your code is a secret. Only you know it and you use that to either set the alarm or turn off the alarm. So, I just use the verb to set. This is how we talk about an alarm system. If you're in a building that has an alarm system or if your house has an alarm system, 
when you leave, you set the alarm. So, you punch in your code one, two, three, four. By the way, that's 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 not my alarm system code or my pin code for my phone. One, two, three, four is a bad code. You should have something far more complex. But when you set an alarm, that's the verb we use to set. We might also say that you need to punch in your code. So, you're not punching with your fists uh but you're punching in your code with your finger. I've used this verb already just a minute ago. When I whenever I talk about an alarm system, you set the alarm by punching in your code. If you're leaving work with another person, you might say, um just a minute, I, I'll punch in my code and set the alarm. That would be a common thing to say to someone. To set off. So, this is what happens when an alarm is armed or an alarm is set. If a security system has been set and someone breaks into the building, maybe they break a window or they use um a pry bar to open a door, um then the alarm is set off. Usually, there's an alarm like an actual audible alarm. So, it's like burp, burp, burp. That's my alarm noise for today. But when a criminal tries to break into a house or building, if it has an alarm system, they will set off the alarm. So, that is when the alarm goes off and usually the alarm system will contact a security company. Usually, when you have an alarm system, you pay a security company to monitor uh, your house or your place of business. We also use the verb to go off. You can hear the alarm going off at that building down the street or someone broke into the jewelry store and you can hear the alarm going off. Whenever you break into somewhere with an alarm system, you will set off the alarm but you can also describe it as saying the alarm is going off or if you open that door, the alarm is going to go off and that usually refers to like the sound that you've set off the alarm that the alarm is going to go off. So, a few more basic vocabulary words. This is a lock. Whenever you want to make something secure, you put a lock on it. This is a standard lock. This lock takes a key. There's also something called a combination lock. A combination lock is very common in schools. Students at my school have a locker, a small little cabinet where they can keep their belongings. And most students have a combination lock on their locker. I say most because 99% of students keep their locker locked with a combination lock but some can't be bothered and so they leave it unlocked. That's always a bad idea. Whenever we talk about something being locked, we sometimes say it's under lock and key. So, if someone was to say to you, where are you keeping all your money? You could say, my money's in the bank or my money's in the basement under lock and key which means you have it locked in a box. (laughs) You should always keep your money in the bank though. Don't keep your money in a box under lock and key but it is a common English verb uh, or a common English phrase that we use when we describe something that's locked up. Um, A lot of people who have jewelry keep it under lock and key. Maybe they keep it in a a locked box somewhere in their house. There's also a kind of lock called a bike lock. This is a special lock that you use just for bicycles. A bike lock looks like this. Let's make it a bit bigger. It's usually some kind of combination lock although it might be a lock that uses a key as well but a bike lock is something you put on your bike so that people don't steal your bike. Uh bike theft is pretty high in most cities. If you don't lock up your bike with a bike lock, there's a good chance that your bike will be stolen. To lock. So, let's talk about the verbs associated with locks. When you have a lock or when you have a lock on your door, you lock the door. That's the verb you use. When I leave for work, I lock the door. When I get out of my car, I lock my car. When I come home from work, I unlock my door. When I come out of the grocery store, I unlock my car. So, you lock and you unlock as simple as that. Another thing people might buy for security or might install is a gate. 
So, remember we're talking about physical security. There are things you can do besides locking your house that can help protect your house and keep you secure. One is to have a gate. Here is a gate that you have to go through in order to get to the end of this dock. So, this person wants their dock to be secure. Maybe they have an expensive boat at the end sometimes. So, you need to uh go through this gate and the gate's probably locked although you could probably just swim around it, couldn't you? <laughs> sometimes people will install a fence. So, a fence is any kind of barrier like this. Usually, a fence is hard to climb. Sometimes, a fence is short and people install the fence uh so people know that they don't want them to come onto their property but sometimes they make the fence super tall so that it's hard for people to get onto their property. Sometimes a fence is just decorative. When I say decorative, it means it's a short fence and people installed it because it looks nice but sometimes people install a fence uh and it's very tall and it's to prevent people from entering. And then the most common kind of fence that I've seen uh in Canada is called a chain link fence. I don't know if this type of fence is familiar to you. A lot of businesses have chain link fence around them. So, this type of fence is made out of steel uh usually stainless steel or galvanized steel. A chain link fence is a fence you can see through but it's very difficult to climb over it and often a chain link fence will have barbed wire along the top. Barbed wire is this wire you see at the very top of this fence. So, this is a chain link fence. This is barbed wire at the top. It's wire where if you tried to climb over, you would hurt yourself because it would poke you. So, uh a lot of times there's barbed wire at the top. Another thing people do and this is a simple thing you can do in order to have more security on your property is to have good outdoor lighting. Um when you have lights on outside at night, it prevents people from committing crime. It's a deterrent we would say. So, when you walk up to a house at night, when the lights are on, you feel safer. When the lights are on outside of your house, there's um just this ability to see uh it can be a little scary at night if there's no light. Sometimes uh you'll hear a sound or maybe you're a little bit scared of the dark still but certainly outdoor lighting is a great way to light up the outdoors and to feel a little more secure and a little safer. You might even go so far as to put bars on your windows. I think someone in the chat mentioned this earlier. I think Eugene mentioned it. Sometimes uh bars on windows is a good way to prevent theft. In a lot of cities, businesses and even apartments will often have bars on windows on the first floor or the ground floor. So, if you are on the second floor, it's less likely that someone's going to climb up and try to get in your window but often businesses and even apartment buildings will have bars on the windows on the first floor just so that at ground level, the windows that people can just walk up to there's a little more of a barrier. You know, you can't just break the window and climb in. There's actual bars there that prevent you from doing that. And then as well, we have different kinds of locks. In this picture, I would call this the basically the door lock. The normal door lock is right there but this door also has what's called a deadbolt. A deadbolt is a large piece of metal. You can kind of see it in the end there that slides out which makes it even harder to open the door. If a door only has this lock and you kick it really really hard, you probably could eventually break the door open but if you also have a deadbolt, it makes it a lot more difficult to open the door. So, a deadbolt is any type of metal bolt or um piece of metal that slides out with a key and it's an additional measure for securing your door so that you feel safer. And then along with that, there's also something called a door chain. This is something that I only usually see when I'm at a hotel 
Often a hotel door will have a door chain or another type of lock that you can flip so that you can feel a little more secure when you're staying at a hotel. The nice thing about a door chain is it lets you open the door a little bit without opening it completely. So, let's say the doorbell rings and you unlock the door but you leave the door chain on and you open the door a little bit and then you're like, oh, it's the pizza guy. Then you take the chain off and open it and then you're able to um get whatever the pizza guy has brought to you. Probably yummy, yummy pizza. A peephole. I had to look, I had to look this one up because this is what I call it and I didn't know if that was the real word but if you live in an apartment or if you're at a hotel, you will most likely have a peephole in your door so that if someone rings the doorbell or knocks, you can look through the little hole to see who's there. When you live in a house though, you usually don't have a peephole because most people have windows on the front of their house. So, if someone knocks or rings the doorbell, you can look out the window or you can peek out the window but a peephole is a tiny thing. Oh, I spilled some tea here. Is a tiny thing that you often have in a door of an apartment building or hotel so that you can look out the door if someone knocks. We also have car alarms. Almost every car in the last 10 or 15 years has a key where you can lock the car and also has a minimal system where if you try to open it, the car will start to honk but you can if you want install a more expensive car alarm. Uh some people do that. They buy an expensive car alarm for their car. Uh something that's a little better than what comes with their car. Maybe you are worried that someone's going to try and take your wallet or your purse when you go for a walk. So, you might learn self-defense. Self-defense would be when you go and take classes to learn how to defend yourself from an attacker. Maybe you learn karate. Uh, karate, sorry. I always said karate but karate is how English speakers say it or jujitsu and hopefully if these are words from your own language, I'm not saying them wrong in your language uh but maybe you will take some sort of class to learn how to defend yourself uh to learn self-defense. By the way, I took self-defense classes a long time ago and they said the best defense is to run away. That is the best way to defend yourself. If you can run away and get somewhere safe, that's the best way to defend yourself. You might carry pepper spray. You might when you go jogging or when you go for a run or when you go for a walk. If you're walking in a place where you don't feel secure, where you don't feel safe, you might take pepper spray. Pepper spray is something you spray at someone and if it gets near their eyes, it makes the their eyes so they can hardly um keep them open and they start crying. So, pepper spray is one way to defend yourself and one way to feel more secure when you go for a walk. If you know you have your pepper spray with you, um that's a good thing to do. By the way, I just noticed in the chat, self-defense also could be called martial arts. So, thank you for mentioning that. English vibes, martial arts or self-defense. Uh learning how to defend yourself. And someone mentioned this earlier. Sometimes a good way to feel secure or have some security is to just get a dog. Dogs bark when strangers come on your property. Dogs love their owners and if someone tries to do something to their owner, the dog might get very, very angry. It might bark. It might even bite the person who's doing that. Most people just have a dog. They would just say, oh, we have a dog. You know, just for a little bit of security, we have a dog. But if you have dogs at a business, we call them guard dogs. Okay? So, on our farm, we have two dogs, Oscar and Walter. I wouldn't call them guard dogs but they do guard the property really well. They do bark when people come and Oscar in particular can get a little bit angry when strangers are on the property. So, we wouldn't call them a guard dog but if Oscar's job was to uh work at like a junkyard and and stop people from stealing things, we would call him a guard dog. And then a few people have asked questions about security guards. So, security guards are people who are hired to protect buildings, businesses and that type of thing. 
So if you had a business and you wanted to make sure no one robbed the business at night, you might hire a security guard. That person would work through the night. They would keep an eye on things. They would make sure no one stole anything. Uh and if anyone tried to steal things, they would yell or call the police or do whatever they're supposed to do. So, security guard. And as we mentioned earlier, I don't have a slide for this. If you hire someone to protect you, like if I was really famous and needed someone to protect me, we would call that person a bodyguard. So, celebrities will often have a bodyguard or two bodyguards with them when they go places to protect them from people who want to um I don't know, do harm or just get too close to them or whatever. They might hire a bodyguard for that. 